What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, it's the Game Week 15 preview. So I'm going to go through a bunch of questions and topics that you put to me on Twitter and give you my opinion. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like. If you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe. Let's jump into the first topic, which is of course the man of the season so far, Erling Haaland. Is it worth taking Haaland out for a minus four hit? Imagine saying that a few game weeks ago. You'd be seen as absolutely crazy. I have players on the bench that I don't necessarily want want to play so you know what I'm going to say first of all let's wait for more information so Champions League last night for Man City Haaland not part of the squad we knew that was going to happen it wasn't a must-win game we're going to hear from Pep Guardiola on Friday in his press conference ahead of the deadline on Saturday he's probably going to say something like you know he's not 100% yet but he's feeling better we're hopefully be part of the squad that doesn't really help us too much and if he does say that and we don't get early team news, that then makes it quite difficult to know what to do with him. If he says he's part of the squad, that should mean at the very least he's going to be on the bench. And in that case, I probably wouldn't sell him, especially for a hit, because then he's very likely to play in game week 16. Brentford at home, that is a good fixture. I think ultimately... You're only really taking Haaland out for a hit if it's for captaincy reasons. So Man City just looked like a really good team. I mean, most weeks they look like a great team to target anyway. But this week with Fulham at home, that is a fixture that I want to have a captain from, whether it's Haaland or De Bruyne, or maybe even if we know he starts, uh, or if we know for sure he starts, is Foden as well could be a good captain. And it kind of, it's not just the fixture that Man City have, it's the fixtures that other teams have. So Arsenal are obviously playing Chelsea, not ideal for captaincy necessarily necessarily and, and Spurs are playing Liverpool and Spurs are going to be missing quite a few players Liverpool obviously not been playing great they're away from home so captain, captaincy just doesn't feel great and you could look elsewhere but I think most of us want a captain from Man City so that's where I'd be considering a minus four if you're going to go to someone like Kevin De Bruyne and you need Haaland to fund it but if he's in the squad even if he's on the bench, I would be a little bit more worried about taking him out for a hit because you're going to want him back in game week 16 and that's almost certainly going to be another hit. And in that, in that case, I just don't think it's necessarily as worth it. Obviously, the deadline's at half one on Saturday UK time. The game is at 3 p.m. So we may get well get some team news. If he's not in the squad at all, I'm almost certain, like, I don't know, 80, 90%, I will sell him for a hit. I'll get De Bruyne and I'll just take the gamble that he's not going to be ready for game week 16. If he is, that then becomes very tricky because like I said, you'd have to take another hit to reverse it. But I think in that situation, I would just risk it for one week that he doesn't go and get another hat trick because I'd have Salah against Southampton at home and De Bruyne against Brentford at home. And I would just hope that they can keep the red arrow down from not owning Haaland. So that's kind of the situation as I see it. Is it worth taking him out for a minus four? That really depends on your team setup. If Foden definitely starts and you can captain him instead, he's a good option. If you could do Salah to De Bruyne because you're not sure if Haaland's definitely going to miss out, that could be another way to get your captaincy. And then if you want to reverse it, you could. It's obviously going to depend on the bench, but I wouldn't go out of my way to sell Haaland this week if there's a chance that he plays, because you're going to want him in game week 16. So for me, it all depends on what Pep says, and obviously we'll hear about that tomorrow. I'll talk about it in final thoughts, and then we'll hope on the deadline stream that we get some early team news and we know whether or not he's playing. But I do think... Despite, I think, hits being less and less viable as we get towards game week 16, if it's for captaincy, you can probably just about justify it. Just about. All right, so who do we bring in for Mitrovic if we only have the same or less money to spend, i.e. you don't have enough cash to go to Callum Wilson, which it seems most people are trying to do this week? Are Skamaka's minutes a turn off? So in general with Skamaka, his minutes have been on the rise in the Premier League and they've looked fairly good. He's not going to be a 90-minute man, but they've been okay. He came off before the 60th minute against Man United. That could have just been a tactical thing. I'm fairly sure it's because he was already on a yellow card. So I wouldn't worry too much. The only thing that slightly concerns me, and to be fair, we'll see the team sheet anyway before the deadline, is West Ham playing in Europe tonight. Uh, and Ant, who's one of the YouTube members in my Discord channel, he, he thinks there could be mass rotation because the group's won right whether they win lose or draw this game in Europe for West Ham they've topped their group so if Antonio and Skamaka are both rested in Europe that would probably put enough doubt in my mind to not go for Skamaka in the Premier League I still think he starts but it would add some doubt 
to that situation, right? If Antonio does play again, then I think Skamaka is fine, right? And you could go for him um, as an option instead of Mitrovic. We'll come on to whether we should sell Mitrovic in a second. If you're put off by Skamaka or you just don't want to go for him, then the options are quite limited in that price bracket. Like if we bring up um, the FPL page now, 7.1 or below. So Mitrovic is right at the top. Then you've got Solanke. I think he could be helpful in terms of unlocking funds to spend elsewhere. If you've already got him, not an option, of course, but he does does have Leeds away and Everton at home so he if anything I think he might be the next best option apart from Skamaka if you're not gonna uh, if you want to sell Mitrovic right even if you can't spend the money straight away and you maybe save it until game week 16 I think fixture wise and the fact he's nailed looks pretty good but then the question is is it really worth using a transfer on Mitrovic to Solanke probably not I would probably just keep Mitrovic in that case then you've got Villa um, attackers and obviously you know they beat Brentford 4-0 suddenly Villa are back then they lose 4-0 to Newcastle not quite sure what to make of them and to be honest Man United at home and Brighton away are not even that great anyway so Watkins or Danny Ings I'm just not sure I would go there obviously Tony he's a bit more expensive anyway but he's suspended so that's going to weaken Brentford you would imagine and even if you wanted to punt on Mbomo for Nottingham Forest away is then Man City away straight after. So unless you've got a good bench or different attackers you could use or another transfer to use on that position, Mbomo is not that great. And then you just go down the list and none of these names inspire me. Johnson, Daka, Welbeck, Awanin. Like they're over minutes risk or they just don't score enough FPL points. So I just don't think I would go anywhere. And then it comes back to whether we should even sell Mitrovic in the first place. Yes, this is the hardest fixture on paper. He's going to, you know, from the bookies and stuff like that, his odds uh, odds this week of scoring will be way down on what they are usually. But we know he's going to play. We know he's going to get good minutes. He could get a penalty. Fulham are going to try and attack Man City, I'm sure. Whether or not they'll be successful at it, we don't know. And even if he does blank, then he's got Man United at home. And I just don't think that's that bad of a fixture. I don't see Fulham going there and scoring uh, three or four goals against Man United. But they could get one or two. And if they do, Mitrovic could be involved in those uh, in those goals. So I think, I think we can uh, sometimes get tunnel vision on players where we see Man City away. And yes, it is a really tough fixture. I'd rather have someone else this week. But I just don't ever look at Mitrovic and think I absolutely have to sell him. And you are using a transfer. So could it even be that if you've got nothing else to do and Mitrovic in your side, you could just hold on to him and have a bit of fun in game week 16 with two free transfers instead? So I wouldn't go out of my way to get rid of him. If you can afford Wilson, fair enough. But unless you're really, unless you really want Solanke or you want to take the maybe slight risk on uh, Skamaka, but again, if Antonio starts, he'll probably be fine. I don't really see where else you go without taking a massive punt. And in which case, I'd probably just keep Mitrovic. All right, with the World Cup nearing, and it is crazy that it starts in 17 days, we have two FPL game weeks to get through yet, and there's a Carabao Cup game, and the World Cup literally begins in 17 days. It's mad, but it is what it is, right? We can't do anything about it now, uh, and it's probably a conversation for another video anyway. Uh, will teams reduce some of their players' minutes if they're involved with their national teams? If so, is it something to keep in mind for the next two game weeks when making transfers? Ultimately, the short answer is I'm probably not going to take this into account whatsoever when making my moves for a few different reasons. One, I'm not really expecting Premier League clubs to give some of their players time off before they go and play in the World Cup. Not if they're important players to the club and mostly involved in and around the first 11. They're on massive contracts. You know, there'll be teams fighting to stay in the league. There'll be teams fighting for European places. Some teams are fighting to challenge for the title. There's a lot at stake in the Premier League. It's massive money. I just don't see them giving them much time off, right? I mean, there might be the odd rest where, you know, the game is 4-5-0 up and they come off after 70, uh, 70 minutes or something like that. But that could happen anyway, right? So that's one thing. Two, I don't think we're going to know which players are going to get the rest anyway. So I'm not really sure how we can take it into account. And three... I don't know if it's different for other nations, but for England, Gareth Southgate's just announced a 55-man squad. Kind of pointless, right? Who cares about that? That's going to get whittled down to more than half. I think it will go down to a 26-man squad. So before game week 15, players aren't going to know for sure they're even in the squad anyway, right? They might know just before game week 16, but that's not even a guarantee either. Now, some players we know are going to go. For England, for example, you know, Pickford's going to go, Kane's going to go, Trippier's going to go, etc. But there'll be some players on the fringe that just won't know whether they're going to make the squad. So Callum Wilson and Tony, for example, England are going to need some backups along with, uh, you know, forwards along with Harry Kane. Tony's in the running, Wilson's in the running, Tammy Abraham's in the running. They're not going to know whether they're going to go or not. 
So how can they know whether to give them rest? Same with James Madison, right? A lot of people think that he should be in the squad. I don't think he's going to be in it, right? That doesn't really matter right now because Gareth Southgate just doesn't seem to like him or want to put him in for whatever reason. But he's still pushing. So do Leicester rest him when they don't know for sure if he's going to be in that England squad or not? Probably not. So ultimately, I think we're just not going to know who's getting rested. The players don't even know for sure they're in the squad yet for the World Cup. And the Premier League is such big money, I just don't see them resting players. So players that are already a doubt for minutes will continue to be a doubt. And players that regularly start, I think they will continue to start, like Harry Kane, for example. So right now, and I might have that completely wrong. That's just my perspective on it. Right now, when I'm thinking about transfers, I'm not particularly worried about the World Cup at all. Who knows? In game week 16, when they know who who's in the squad, who's definitely going to go. If teams are, are doing well and winning, they might bring them off early. But at that point, you hope they've got a return anyway. Okay, so what should we be doing with Foden? He has missed the last two Premier League games and played 90 minutes in the Champions League. So he played 90 minutes last night in a game that Man City just didn't need to win whatsoever. And the week before, I think he played like 80 or 81 minutes against Dortmund, also in the Champions League. Now, I don't think that because he played last night, even for 90 minutes, that that completely rules him out for Saturday. Because the fact that he hasn't played the last two Premier League games means he hasn't been overloaded with minutes, and so he should be fit enough to play on Saturday if Pep Guardiola wants to play him. But it does concern me a little bit that he was pretty much nailed starting every single Premier League game and then all of a sudden he misses two. And Pep hasn't really given us a reason other than he picks the squad, he makes the decisions. And we see that sometimes with players. I've seen it with like Mares in the past where he's getting a run in the side you consider bringing him in, and all of a sudden he's just out of the side, right? For what we see is no real reason. Obviously, Pep is seeing training, attitudes, and stuff like that every single day. So maybe there's something going on. But unless he talks about it, we're just not going to know. And nothing's come out in the media or anything like that. So if I was an owner, I would be slightly concerned from that perspective. If we don't get early team news, I don't think you can buy him this week, right? I think you've just got to go with the players you've got or you move for someone else instead. So if you've already got like Saka and Zaha like me, for example, and you want to move one of them on and Foden doesn't look like an option, then you could, I mean, if we get early team news, you could go for someone like Mares instead or even Jack Grealish if you want to take a bit of a punt. But someone like Rashford or Almer on, they're all options as well. Trossard too. So you could look at it like that. The key question, the one I'm kind of getting to now is, what do you do if you're a Foden owner and we don't know for sure that he's starting, i.e. we don't get that early lineup? I think the fixture this week is so good. Fulham are home and Brentford are home in 16. I'd be tempted to keep him, especially if I've got other things that I could prioritise. If your team looks excellent and Phil Foden's the only issue, you could may maybe move him on. The, the issue is you're, you're moving him on for someone that on paper is just worse because I think for his price, he looks great against Fulham at home. So we need to wait and see what Pep says on Friday. I don't think it's going to give us any indication about whether or not he starts. Hopefully get that lineup. And if he plays, you've got to keep him. But I think the only way I would consider moving him on is if, if it's more like a luxury transfer. There's nothing else wrong with the squad. And I want to bring in Martinelli or Saka or Rashford or Trossard, whoever it is, because I'm just not sure he's going to play. But don't let the 90 minutes in the Champions League completely rule the decision because it doesn't mean he's definitely not going to play right. He's fit enough. We've heard Pep talk about this before, that Phil is always ready to play the next game right. He's always fit for the next game. So it wouldn't completely rule him out, but I would be worried at this point. And you could possibly look to move him on if we don't know for sure that he starts. Just, just know that if you get rid of him and he does end up starting, that is going to be massively frustrating. So this is a name we haven't heard very much from an FPL perspective so far this season. If Haaland is out for game week 15, is Ronaldo a good one-week punt? Now, if you'd asked me a few weeks ago, I would have said definitely not. And I still think it's the case that if everyone's fit, Ten Hag would not be playing Ronaldo. But everyone is not fit right now. Anthony Martial is still out. Anthony's got a problem at the moment. Sancho is ill. None of those three players are going to be playing in Europe. And that gives Man United less options to play in that front three. So they do have have a pretty big game in Europe tonight and they will probably play a pretty much full strength squad because they need to win by at least two goals to top the group and that's really important in the Europa League because you avoid having to play one of the teams that drops down from the Champions League and essentially you miss one of the rounds as far as I understand it. 
So I do think that Ronaldo is going to play in Europe, but I do think there's also a good chance that he plays on the weekend if none of those players are back fit. Then it comes down to whether he's worth a one-week punt. So if we look at the fixtures this week for game week 15, Man United have got Aston Villa away. Now I think, you know, playing away is always more difficult than playing at home, but I think Man United can go to Villa and get a couple of goals. I think they've been creating enough chances recently. Ronaldo's always going to be in and around the box. He can be frustrating to watch because I think from a Man United fan perspective, he does often kind of almost stop attacks. He's just not he's just not the player he once was, right? We all know that. But if he's going to play, he will get chances. He'll probably be on penalties as well. So I don't think it's that bad of a fixture. The other option, obviously, for around a similar price, and Rashford, uh, sorry, Ronaldo is a bit cheaper this season, 10.2 million. But if you could afford it, Harry Kane's still an option against Liverpool. They will probably be missing Richarlison and Kulisewski and probably Son as well. So that is not ideal for Harry Kane. But you know he's going to get 90 minutes. He also has penalties as well. There's no real doubts around Harry Harry Kane other than the team that might play with him so if you've got the money you could go there elsewhere I don't know if there's a huge amount of forward punts this week I guess you could go for Bamford but his minutes are a little bit of a concern Alvarez if you know he's definitely going to start against Fulham at home Jamie Vardy possibly or Daka, but you don't know what their minutes are going to be like Chelsea and Arsenal I'd probably just avoid because they're obviously they're playing each other it's going to be a tough game for both sides and then you've got Callum Wilson right and we maybe are at the point where Callum Wilson is just a better pick than Ronaldo, even if Ronaldo starts. To be honest with you, the way that Newcastle are attacking, the way that Wilson has played so far this year, forgetting the money for a second, Wilson might just be a straight-up option. But because there's no, I would say, massively standout players this week, if you think Ronaldo is going to start, which I think he will if the amount of injuries we have continue, so Martial is still out, and Anthony, and Sancho, it means it's going to be Rashford, Ronaldo, and then someone on the right... A one-week punt, I mean, it might not be the end of the world. That's what I would say. It doesn't really excite me too much like it would have done, you know, seasons and seasons ago. But given the other options, given the fact that Kane is playing Liverpool, if you don't want to go for Wilson or you already own him, and you don't want to go for any of the others that I mentioned, I mean, there's worse one-week punts. That's what I'll say. All right, how overplayed is the four yellow card worry this season given the game week 16 break? It seems like it puts FPL managers off good players such as Jesus, Dallo, etc. Yes, Tony got suspended, but with unlimited transfers, we have the luxury of taking risks. So the idea there is that in game weeks 15 and 16, if you want to take a risk, you can because you're going to get unlimited transfers over the World Cup and reset your team essentially before game week 17. But I think this always happens where we remember the bad stuff and not the good stuff. Now, to be fair, Tony was mentioning the question, so it's not completely forgotten. But the same thing happens with team news. So you'll get team news, you'll take action on it, and the transfer you make because of the news you got doesn't work out and then you'll and then we'll see comments like yeah but this always happens with early team news next time i'm just not going to act on it we can only ever act on the information we have and we should be taking into account the four yellow card situation right no one remembers when they got team news and it worked out really well like this week for example i did foden to saka okay that didn't work out was that because of the early team news no that's because i got really unlucky with saka getting injured if saka had gone on to get 10 15 points or whatever it could have been I would have been pretty happy I got that team news. And it's the same situation with the four yellow card limit, right? A lot of us got really unlucky with Madison that we bought him in game week nine. He was on two yellow cards. He then got three over the next three weeks. But had you been a non-owner of Madison and it was game week 11 when he was on four yellows, I would have probably said I'm not going to bring him in right now because if he gets one more, he's going to miss game week 12. That's a blank game week, right? I think it was game week 12 anyway. And he did get suspended, right? And it's the same with Tony. One or two game weeks ago, if you had the choice of Tony or maybe Wilson or someone like that, I probably would have taken the guy that's not close to getting suspended. So yes, Jesus was a player that a lot of us got put off of because of the yellow card and then did really well and didn't get suspended. But there's lots of players that did. So you have to take into account each individual situation. For example, if Harlem was on four yellow cards... And about, like, let's say he's fully fit, right? He's on four yellow cards. I don't own him, but he's about to play Fulham at home and Brentford at home. I'm taking that risk. And if he doesn't play, I'll just transfer him out because he's such a big kind of player. But with Dallow, I don't think that applies, right? Why would you bring in Dallow right now who could get suspended for game week 16 when you're probably going to want to play him? That then leaves you having to make a different transfer. Yes, you can take a risk. That doesn't mean you want to start taking loads of hits. You can get a different defender from another team, Brighton perhaps for example maybe someone from West Ham or you could even just go for a different Man United defender like Luke Shaw I don't think he's quite as good 
But the chances of getting heavily punished by like 5, 10 points over two game weeks is quite low. And yes, it's very low that Dallow will specifically get the yellow card this week because this is now the only week that matters. If they go into game week 16 with four yellow cards, it doesn't really matter at all because you can just get rid of them in your unlimited transfers. But what if he does get suspended? That would be pretty annoying. So I would look at, and I think you can, um, yeah, you can go by yellow cards, right, and how many they've got. We'll go all players. And you can look at certain situations, right? So let's just say you wanted to bring in an Arsenal defender this week. Would you t forget they've got Chelsea, right? We'll just do a hypothetical. They've got Nottingham Forest at home again. Would you bring in Saliba, who could then be suspended for game week 16? Or would you just get Gabriel? I would just get Gabriel, right? And it might be the case that there is a player that's so good. Some players are already on six yellow cards, by the way. Some players that are so good, you take that risk. But I don't see many of them there. So fair play for anyone that took the risk with Jesus last week. But I probably wouldn't bring him in now. I wouldn't bring in Mitrovic now, that's for sure. Now, that partly is because of the fixtures. But why would I take the risk on four yellows? I'd get Solanke or I'd get Skamaka or something like that. Um, so that's what I'd be looking at. Harry Kane's on four yellow cards, right? Now, he's got Liverpool at home. So that's maybe another reason not to go for him. If the fixtures were flipped and he had Leeds at home in 15 and Liverpool in 16, I would maybe take the risk because Leeds at home is such a good fixture. So I think it's easy to say that we overplay it because we see a player score goals who we've all been put off by. But there's lots of players that do get suspended and it does affect our future moves. I think we can only act on the information we have. So I think it's fine. I think it's player specific, right? If Jesus had a really great fixture this week, maybe I would get him. But Dallow, I just think you can go for a different Man United defender instead. So take it on a player by player basis. Take it on a fixture by fixture basis. But you're right. After this week, it just doesn't matter at all. Because then if they do get suspended, it'll be for game week 17. You can act on it with your unlimited transfers. Let me know what you think about everything I've talked about in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like, hit that subscribe button, and I'll be back tomorrow with final thoughts. Thank you.